You know, it's going to be loud. Yeah. Hey, y'all. I'm eating a pickle. I'm sorry. Here we go. I'm eating a pickle. <laughs> I can't believe it. It is a commercial. We must not be back enough for a commercial today. Well, hello, hello. Good evening. We'll allow people to get on first. Homestead and Graven Business Life. How are you? Sean Alaska, what's up, man? We're back sitting like we're supposed to, by the way. <laughs> was it last week? No, we went on last week. We did live last week. We were going the week before, weren't we? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll lose all track of time. That big okay? Makes me feel better. <laughs> uh, maybe it's the vinegar that helps settle my stomach. I don't know. That's funny. You might as well eat uh, tomatoes then. Rain, entirely too much rain. You know, we have been had been super dry with no rain, what, almost two solid weeks? Yeah. And all of a sudden, we got crazy amounts the last two days. Today, we got a really good amount of rain, and yesterday, it rained. So it rained. I mean, it was pretty heavy, but then mm -hmm. it didn't last really long. Um, but we've had a lot of rain, too. Especially today, it kind of flooded on and off multiple times. Hey, Karen, how are you? Hey, Cecilia. Hey, Fancy Farmer. Missy, uh, Fancy Farmer asked, how are you feeling? She's smoking a pickle. A pickle. Pickle. A pickle. We, um, I still have good days and bad days. I'm getting more better days than I had. So I know that's um, improvement. This afternoon, I got really nauseated. Um, I was trying to fold clothes, and I was gagging and all that stuff. And hey, I man. ate, and it made me feel better. But um, I was still kind of sick to my stomach a while ago. They suffered seven. And um, then we read a post about a little girl in our town, and it upset me. And then I started getting nauseated again. Um, so I'm eating a pickle. Pickles, dill pickles help settle my stomach. Well, they just make me feel better. I don't. That's so weird. I think every pregnant woman says. I don't that. know. I guess it's the vinegar in it that actually. I don't know. Mm. We make. Uh, oh gosh. We make pickles, but our pickles are too strong, so she has to get There's a different kind of pickles. There's too much deal in them. I guess for my taste buds right now. And um, yeah. Miss Cecilia, we got all the peas that we have, and that's a whole other story in itself. But uh. All the peas up until now, we have shelled. How many bags do we have peas? I mean, I don't even know where to start. We all, I lost count a long time ago. It's a blessing that we did oh, finally yeah. get our uh, little, <laughs> well, it's not little. It's a nice size refrigerator, but it was very economical. Uh, nothing fine or fancy about it, but it's got a nice size freezer, nice size bottom. Um, so we, um, we're very thankful for that. I delivered yesterday, yeah. and you unloaded it in, in the, the rain. rain. Crazy amounts of rain. Hey, Amy, how are you? Um, we actually, instead of having four rows, we actually have peas, period. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows. Was, mm -mm, close to two on the end. No. Now that's made. Two and three. I'm not counting the butter beans. Oh, you're talking about just the peas. Just the peas. I got, so we got seven rows of peas and then two rows of, or three rows of butter beans. I was going to say, I know I counted like nine or ten rows <laughs> of like pea bean. Like. We have got beans and peas running out of our ears right now, which is a blessing. Mm -hmm. I can't. We actually had a spring here. That's why. Sean lost this. I'm a huge sweet pickle fan. I am too. He is. I prefer, I prefer deal. I guess because most time if I'm eating pickle, I either eat it on a burger or eat it like in, in like tuna or chicken mm -hmm. or something like that. So I like sweet pickle. What are the purple ones? Miss Cecilia, that is, we have three varieties of purple hull. Uh, one is pink eye purple hull, which is our favorite. Mm -hmm. And then we raise a Mississippi pink eye, which is, it's just a smaller version of that. That's a little bit greener of a pea. And then, uh, then we raise a uh, red ripper and all those are in purple hulls. The pink eye purple hull are our favorite though. I'm eating a pickle mom. I got not real nauseated a while ago and, Sometimes those pickles will hit. Well, they always do. They help settle my stomach. So I didn't think y'all would enjoy me being on here um, gagging. <laughs> All right. So uh, I saw somebody. Uh, yeah, I love sweet relish too, Sean Alaska. I saw somebody ask about the calf. A little update on the calf. Ooh, peanut butter fudge ice cream sounds good. We all, Fancy. I will say, 
Sunday when we found her, she was on her deathbed. In the, the beginning of the videos that y'all saw, if y'all was able to watch our video today, the beginning of the video, she was still up, moving around, not a lot, um, but she was up, she was moving around. Y'all saw her nursing on her mom a little bit. This was the thing. Her mom would let her nurse, but just very little. So she was not getting enough. Um, she was not getting enough to stay hydrated. She wasn't getting enough to function. And by that afternoon when we left, the times that we were giving the calf the bottle, we were literally having to hold her head up. So we knew that if we didn't do something, that she was going to die. Um, and when y'all saw us bring her home and unload her, you know, she was holding her head up some. But by the time we walked out, I told Colby, I was like, there's, I just don't think she's going to. Actually, make it. before she we could. loaded her up in the car. Uh, up there um, at our bee farm, we really thought there's no she, reason to even load her. Yeah. I mean, you know, she's just, she's not going to make it. So, and it, we did, we were kind of stuck between if she was sick and that's why she was not able to run around and yeah, chase her mom. issued right. sickness. Or if she just had not got enough Friday and Saturday. So she was dealing with the issues of, I mean, Being extremely and, dehydrated, yeah. and and it was super super hot. I don't think we mentioned that. that. Day, in all of those fields, there was very little shade, and she was laying when we found her. Well, one time she was laying under a tree, but the majority of the day, she was in the sun, and right. it was a very 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 hot. So I think between the very little milk and the extreme heat. She was extremely malnourished and dehydrated. This bee farm we 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 own or we have as a family, no one lives there. Uh, my parents have a have a place they can stay, and we can stay there if we ever needed to. But it's just a big place where really our family gets to get together. So we're not there just every day with these beef cows. So that's why we moved our bees back. If you remember those videos, we moved them back away from that farm, um, just so we can keep active, uh, watch on them. Beef cows, you usually don't have to spend too much time just watching them all the time as long as you have good fence until they're having a baby. And, and we knew we were, get, we were having a baby soon on this one. She was the first time to have her small little calf. Like I said in the she video, was very we, small. we didn't really know much about this cow. And that's that's sometimes a, not a good thing, but it's just a good deal on this cow. Hey, Hank, how are you, man? How about you? Um, but, but it was one of those things where when I got there, I told Misty, I said, there's something wrong with that calf. I mean, and of course, I don't want to say that in front of. Our family, because our family has a bunch well, I mean, of kids she, that love. She and seemed to be doing okay, but just, it was just kind of that. Not a normal cat. Is activity. she, is something really wrong? Or are we just looking into it too much? Um, but by the time, it's just within, well, just within hours, she just went downhill really, 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 really fast. Yep. And I thought she was not going to make it, but she is still alive. And um, she's made progress every day. Um, she we had her some battles three or fourth day, or third or fourth day. So she's made it through. I wouldn't say she's firecracker by any means, mm -hmm. she's not out of the woods yet. But she is a lot better than what she was, um, just even in the video. Yeah, I um, she I, I, we're still noticing some things that aren't quite normal, right? Um, so she's not out of the woods, but she's yet, getting but the, the most high quality milk that you can get. And we have you know, our, our cows are all grass-fed cows and, and our two jerseys are throwing out some creamy milk mm -hmm. so she's getting some great quality milk actually she actually looks better to me just you know a little not i wouldn't say fatter because she's not really fatter but she just looks healthier to me yeah but again she's just making not progress there. yeah she's, she's making progress yeah. um hey, I, having the home tell, what's up? I, I don't know if we've gotten a lot of this on video but we've given her some hey miss kathy how are you not that we want to but again we're trying to save the calf's life so we've given her d different shots and different um, none of them are none of them are like prescribed antibodies from the doctor yeah. it's just stuff that either is a, a immune booster a electrolyte booster and then the last one we gave her was like a fever reducer almost like a tylenol right. for us um I, because we did not check her temperature i don't have a cattle thermometer or any i mean i just don't have something suitable for that um but i could tell Oh, you could feel she, her. she was, was not normal, up. and she's slowly getting there. This is her third full day with us, 
and three times a day we are heating milk. I'm pulling. Uh, uh, I almost want to call her Anna and Elsa. I know. Uh, it's this like is not frozen. Disney this curse. Not Disney. <laughs> Allie and Elsa's milk <laughs> and warming it up. She gets two quarts every morning when Colby's done. I give her two quarts or between one and two. And then she gets two more quarts at night at between eight, nine, and ten. So she is getting. Uh, we would probably not she, be feeding her that much, but right now we're just trying to get her back we're trying up to, to get par. her rehydrated, <laughs> get her immune system back up. And then we're going to try to put her, her with our... Get uh, back up and healthy. Yeah, it, it, she just looked... She was just... She was down. She really was. But we're going to put her with our... As soon as she gets her strength... If she gets her strength back, let me say like that. If she can pick up and do okay, then she'll eventually go. I'm going to put her with both our dairy cows, uh, really probably Friday, to be honest with you, this week, and see if she will have enough strength to kind of hang with them and be around other cows that's and our learn goal. how to, you know, to nurse normal. So that's our goal. Like Missy said, that's, that's our goal. Our goal. We, we're like we said, she's we're nowhere near that. Woods yet. <laughs> yeah. But that's she, our goal um, so this is what we were doing with her. She would not, she was not getting up on her own. A rustic tradition. And homestead. you'll, you'll see in our upcoming videos. Um, we were literally having to, we're, we're having to pick her up, stand her up and force feed her. So she's making progress. Like I said, hey, she made it through. She's not dead, but we're still, there's still some obstacles and battles. Like she's, she's got to get out of this failure to thrive thing. We've noticed some stuff in her stool. So like we said, she's not out of the woods yet, but, but she's making some progress. So. Now, uh, what, what, here's, here's, you try to take a problem and make a solution. So thoughts on the mama cow and the calf. Calf is we hope we have nurse cows basically because there are milk cows. So ultimately, we can feed this cow at no money. Uh, no money. Mine. You need a nap. We're at not no having money. to buy milk. Yeah, like so we we're not have, buying we have milk. milk replacer or anything like that. And she's getting great quality milk. Actually, better probably than what her mama would mm -hmm. be giving her quality wise for a cow. Secondly, hey Stacy, the, the the calf. I mean, excuse me, the cow is still bagged up pretty heavy. We went out there yesterday. Just to see the cow. The cow is still bellowing a little bit. I have a cousin who lives down the road. He's going to bring his calf. That his calf is about two months old. Lost her mama. Um, her mama died. Mama cow died. So, delivery, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, so he's been baby bottle feeding her. So he's going to try to put her on that mama. To maybe help, of course, break the mama. And let her understand what it means to be a mama. But also, you don't have to buy. Yeah, and, and not have to buy a milk replacer for his cow so it, you know we may can take both problems and make a solution out of both of them and, and everything come out okay yeah. uh, having the homestead the calf is actually my father's um he picked this calf uh, this cow up from somebody we know just off a of whim a pretty cow but just and the baby small, is beautiful I mean, yeah she's this beautiful. calf is gorgeous so um that's whose cow it was but right now since we have the barn we have the cows we have I guess the gumption and want to, uh, the cow is with us or the calf is with us now. Yeah. So. Well, we couldn't hey, sweet pea leave farm, her New York, there you? knowing that if we, if we left we her, left her, she would have died. died. No doubt. So uh, we had to bring her home and we could, I couldn't. Thank you, Janice Grenier. I could, it, did, it would not have made sense to us for his dad to have to come here, get milk right. and go all the way. And it's like a, a good 15 minute drive 15, yeah, there. Easily. So he would have had to come here, get milk, go out there, feed the calf. I mean, you're talking three times a day. Don't wrong. So do we need another chore, especially one of baby bottle feeding? No, but at the same time, we're not going to sit there and watch the calf die. Yeah. So, we're so we she has made progress, but she's still not yeah. out of the woods. But our goal is to ultimately get her strong enough up on her feet and out with the mama cows and let her nurse off of them. So the farm said, uh, that's going to take some time. Just got a pair of Jersey heifer cats. We were bottle Yay. raising. Awesome. We, ch we try not to bottle raise, but we are bottle raising one right now. And I uh, had just said the week I before, know. No more animals. Yeah. Because something come up. He had mentioned something about doing a family. Horse. I wanted to do a, uh, just oh, a older horse And I was like, no, we are not getting <laughs> any more animals. And mm -hmm. then we go for Father's Day and the calf is like about to die. And I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> what's up, Broussard? How are you? Yeah, what's so funny is um, yeah, our Father's Day, man, 
I mean, of course, it's great to be with family, and, and we had a great day. Well, we were out but there But we were pretty much out there with the calf day. all day. And 95 degree heat. I told Misty, if you watch that video, I'm in, like, two different shirts because the first one was so soft and wet with sweat. <laughs> it was I, hot. I was like, I've got to change because I'm like, people think we're, it's two days. It's yeah. actually just one. So. And that's what goes back to, I think, she was born in the middle of summer. As Which hot as good. hot can get. <laughs> and she's not getting enough milk from her mom and the heat is not helping so anyway she was just dehydrated to the point of she was pitiful she was pitiful i thought she was gonna die well, truly to be honest with you we've only this this cow's only been on our farm for about probably not, two about, months maybe two and a half three months so no do tell how she, what kind of shape the cow was in when she coming was to bred, the farm. so yeah. you know again we're we try to breed all ours on farm but this was one we just picked up like I said, on a whim. So uh, I think my dad learned his lesson. I think he's going to sell the cow. <laughs> so yeah, anyways. I mean, if 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 a mom is not going to take care of her baby, it's definitely, in our opinion, not worth having on our our on our property because it's just too much. Mom should take care of her baby. That's right. We have too many other obligations to be bottle feeding. Mm -hmm. uh, let those baby girls get a horse. Heather said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We want one of those horses, though, Heather, like, you know, the ones on the trail rides up there in the Smokies where they're so old, they you know nothing just, to do. You but don't just, even have to hold the yeah, rein. They, they don't even need a halter. They just walk. So that's kind of what we're that's looking for. That's his goal, like. but I'm like negative. I ain't <laughs> feeding nothing else. <laughs> the thing about us for us, and all truth us, we always talk about uh, there's got to be a purpose for an animal. So a horse really doesn't make sense. So it's got to be one of those ones like the old grandpa horse that they're trying to get rid of that's literally going to the deathbed. I death said bed. more animals. I want like a nursing home horse. That's what I <laughs> Nursing <answer>. home horse. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, what's up, Moon Farm? How are you? Well. Fine not. What's going on, y'all? This will be, uh, besides the calf that we're baby bottle feeding. Is that right? Baby bottle feeding. I yeah, don't know. The calf. Bottle baby feeding. Any, baby bottle feeding. Anyway. Um. <laughs> I am leaving for the first time in our marriage, almost 13 years. Yeah. For the first time, I will be gone okay. for the very first night so ever. We're not, we're, we're homebodies and we tend to do everything together. Uh, the times that we've been apart, it, it's been like uh, if our kids had something with the church or um, uh, one day, actually, when Misty had, I think Jennings. Me and Aiden went up to the cabin and decorated for Yeah, he was Christmas. he was just a few months old. Yeah, so he we cried couldn't a lot. Yeah, so we so couldn't I was travel not with taking him. him anywhere. But there's never been a time where it's like, oh, we're just, you know, kind of separating from the family. But Missy's doing something great. So she's leaving for uh, a trip to go check on a friend of ours. And we would covet your prayers for her. She is uh, her name is Stacy. And um, she is <clears> she is not doing well, as in just staying sick and had, has a bout with cancer. So she lives about two states away. So. Ms. Mack is going with some friends and going to check on her and see her. We pray are her going to be filling food. her freezer. What's up, Mindful Homestead? Um, she has stage four um, colon cancer. And right now her liver is affected she's mainly. About, she's about 45 or 46. Yeah, she's so very we young. For and um, she will be having to have surgery next month. So the chemo, she's got a, a gene in her cancer that's very rare and very aggressive. Um, so the idea of her not taking chemo is a big deal. And then having to recover from this major surgery next month is a, is a big deal. So some, myself and some friends have prepared a lot of meals, freezer meals, and we're going to load up basically a SUV full of coolers and pack those coolers full of frozen meals. And we're going to be taking those to her and um, basically stock in her freezer so that she doesn't have to worry about cooking that they basically can get it out and warm it up. And, you know, I, I feel like and we as a friends. family has, has yeah. we have always had servant heart. So when the opportunity came up, I am in the stage you, where sweetie. the baby is, I think the hardest thing with Jennings right now is just making sure somebody takes him to the potty because he, I just right. potty trained him this week. Um, but other than that, he's kind of in the stage where he just wants to play with his siblings. I mean, he does get into stuff. <laughs> Not even go there. But um, we'll talk about that later. But um, just keeping a close eye on him. But he really 
can kind of mind his own business as long as he doesn't. Hey, who saw the picture I put on Facebook and Instagram where he was covered in the diaper rash ointment? I mean, he's wild. So you just have to keep an eye on him. But um, so I'm super excited that to be able to go on this opportunity because there's been so much times where I'm, hey, Grammy Karen, I'm nursing up? a baby. So I have had to pass up opportunities in the past. So I'm in that stage where, Yes, I'm pregnant, but I'm in the stage where I'm not having to attend to a newborn and I can go to a friend that was very, very precious yeah. to us and serve her family. So I'm super excited about that. Yeah, it's in the Little Rock area. So it's 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 pretty good piece from us, about four and a half, five hours from us. So um, they have the opportunity to go, so they're going to go. So it's going to be good for them. It'll be about five and a half, so, six hours where they actually live. Okay, it's so in that area. Great thing to do. And we would not take Misty from that. But when I say how crazy it's been, this week has been nuts because it's been raining a lot. As you see, we've been doing like a crazy pea haul and corn haul, and our tomatoes are just now starting to come in. I actually had a tomato sandwich tonight that was the bomb. So busy time of year for gardening and for now we have a baby bottle calf we're trying to take care of. <laughs> we have Cornish Cross, our third del a delivery tomorrow. So we and I'll be those. gone at six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I'm so leaving. We, we have uh, some meat chickens being uh, delivered tomorrow. <laughs> uh, again, third of the year. So we're getting ready to do another butcher. Uh, our second of the year, third of, uh, butcher of the year. We have our incubators are full, and they're supposed to be hatching Friday. Are they gonna? They're gonna. Yeah, they're Friday gonna to Saturday, and then Ridge Live that's on his little uh, tour around the south. You know, the southeast United States. Is coming by Saturday. So we have a lot going on with the fact that Miss Max is going to be gone for a day or two and just crazy times, crazy times. Yep. Never a dull moment. Never a dull moment. Let's see. Uh, calf problems. We always have calf problems. <laughs> <laughs> Walker Farm, what's up? How are y'all? Um, let's see. Yeah, I ate my first Cherokee Purple Tomato sandwich tonight we actually have had they started coming in slow it's amazing our peas are almost finishing up and our tomatoes are just now starting to come in so can't beat that yeah i fix sloppy joes so all you northern folks may not know what that is a man witch man witch they still may not even know what that is we just call it sloppy joe <laughs> i don't know why it became but that name but. colby was i think about to have a Connection. How to eat those Connection. tomatoes. <laughs> so I got a piece of Misty's. I like her bread when it's first made. And we made it last night. I don't um, know. It, yesterday. Fresh. It was fresh bread. So I was like, man, I'm going to smash a tomato sandwich on this bread. It's Sloppy Joe in Minnesota. It's Sloppy Joe in Minnesota. <laughs> we love yeah. them. And I, I love to home make them. And <laughs> I have my own recipe of spices. And they were, they were really good. You're going to come home. Your playrooms are destroyed. Hey, I gotta say, my playroom is always. I was to like say, I'm probably. I'm always. probably a little bit more of a stickler than Misty on cleanliness when it comes to the children. So it's going to be well kept. They're going to be like dressed in suit and ties, <laughs> ready to serve as like little butlers. Oh, I have to tell you what Sayla said. I was in there <laughs> blow drying her hair, and I was like, Sayla, you know, I'm going to be leaving in the morning. I'm going to be gone. Hot in, in Wisconsin, what they're called there. Oh my goodness, That's I've crazy. never heard of that. No. Anyway, she said, I didn't tell you this earlier. I said, I said, I was telling her I'm going to be going all day tomorrow and I'm not going to be here with y'all tomorrow night. So daddy's going to have to make sure everybody gets baths. And I was telling her, you know, daddy's going to make sure that everybody goes to sleep. I was telling her yeah. all that. And um, she was asking, she was like, well, why are you going to be gone overnight? So I was telling her and she said, but why do you have to do that for? So I was telling her, you know, about how it was good to serve other people and stuff like that. And she said, I, she heard me say serve, and then she said, well, the waiters can bring her water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. I just, I thought that was the cutest thing ever. So. Our Sloppy Joe, it's funny because our Sloppy Joe, our Thank spaghetti. Sloppy Joe spaghetti, taco, whatever. What else Miss Kathy. We have? Um, we have a ton direct of Direct message me, and yeah. I'll send you my recipe. It's very easy. Most of the time, I don't even measure. I just kind of pour all the ingredients. And no, stir it up. I actually measure. I'm 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 not a measure -er person. 
but yeah, anyway, I thought that was, I, yeah, we might have to cut it short tonight because <laughs> he's having a hard time. So, okay, now I let's talk that was about. super cute on Salem. Yeah, mine for Homestead. I think it's cool how our peas are going out, and you, uh, there's a lot of people in the north that we They're watch that are just now starting in. to plant corn, and our corn's done. I mean, we're finished. Mm -hmm. So, so again, now we're going to talk about the pandemonium today. On top of owning this farm and on top of all the other stuff that we have, um, you know, we've been pea shelling fools lately. I mean, like crazy amount of pea shelling fools. So, so someone reached out to us. She was like, hey, we have a pea sheller. Why don't you come get it and borrow it? And I told Mr. The other day, I was like, well, we, we really, that should have, you know, three weeks ago because we've been shelling peas. But forever. we did have another big container. Y'all seen our big black <laughs> container and it was, Full again. It was three the fours. Video, it was three done. fourths full. So I was talking to her last week, and she was she was like, "Look, I have one. It's sitting in storage. Our garden has not Gross, put out peas like it normally does. So why don't y'all come get it and use it? And then that way you can kind of see if you want to invest in it or not because they are like crazy expensive. So she, anyway, she was saying. Um, just come get it and try it. And if y'all like it, then that way, you know, you can buy your own. If you don't like it, then of course, you know, you wouldn't have to invest in one. So anyway, I went and picked it up. I got, had everything set out it's today. It's old school. And so it has like the, the two rubber wheels running. I've seen some that are a little bit bigger and nicer. This is just a little bit older one and it's a residential size. So you, you run just a few at a time, but it's got two turbine wheels that's running. So they're rubber. Yeah, and so basically good. you stick the P in from the bottom end and it, it squeezes it to the point where it squeezes the shell so it shoots the peas out. So Jennings, I had my phone behind me and I had everything set up in front of me and Jennings had climbed. I was on my last little, I was bringing them over by buckets and I was on my last little bucket and um, I was running on through and Jennings was sitting on the other side of me. Um, and he had been sitting there for almost the whole time. And he was just sitting there watching me. He and had there's some only stuff two in, home now. Let's yeah, he had had some stuff in front of him that he was playing with. Um, and my phone was just dinging behind me. And, y'all, I'm not the type of person. That I don't get, like, text messages and calls and all that. So my phone had dinged, like, seven times. And I was trying to finish up. And I so I was like, who? I turned around just for a minute. I was like, who is messaging me? Because my phone never messages. And um, as soon as, as hey, soon Super as King. I turned around to look at my phone, can y'all guess what happened? Crickets. Crickets. Just take a <laughs> guess what happened. We have like, a two-year-old sitting like, by the, the bean sheller. Like within... Three seconds. Sean, you're correct. He put his fingers in. Well, he was the trying. To, I think he was trying to put a P in there. And, you know, <sighs> we got a shelled finger. It was terrible, y'all. It was terrible. So when I turned around and realized. Not one finger. Like I, I turned around and glanced at my phone and he started screaming. So I turned around and it was still going with his hand in there. So I, I turned it off real quick and it, it, it had two, these two fingers and this one was flipped, was flipped like it was that. Like this. His whole hand. Was so the only reason like it didn't just suck his whole hand in there was because this finger was, was stopping it. It was from terrible. Sucking it, so. so yes, the screaming. So I turned it off and immediately stuck, was trying to get my hands between the wheels and pull it up so I could get his finger out, but I couldn't budge him. Like, could not budge him. See, I'm on, the, and so I'm on the way home. No, you were not. So then I turned around and grabbed my phone and called Colby but, and no, said, wait, but see, Colby, she was on her last piece. So she already told me, she said, give me about 10, five, 10 minutes. You know, we're, I mean, we'll be done. We'll take this back to the original owner. So, I'm getting ready, unbeknownst to know that our kid's hand is stuck in the shelter. Well, I'm going to take it home. So, yeah, he's on his way here, but I didn't realize it at the time because I like tried to get his hand out and realized I can't budge it. So I turned around, grabbed my phone, and called Colby. I didn't realize he was on his way here and was he couldn't even hardly understand me, but he knew something was wrong and I was in a panic. So then I threw my phone down and remembered that some guys were outside working on our fence in the back. 
So I ran out. I'm still like a little shaky inside because I was so traumatized by that. So I started yelling and screaming at them. I know one of these gentlemen's gentlemen very personally. Yeah. So he jumped off of what he was doing and ran in and, and, and Colby and he come in at the same time. And while I was waiting on them, after I was screaming at him, I ran and got a spoon because I looked in the bottom and could see a little gap. So I stuck the spoon in there and was trying to lift it up so I could pull his hand out. And the spoon just bent. It, we it hope didn't, that mother. It we. didn't bold budget. So by the time they got in, they kind of. We broke it. <laughs> we broke a pea shell that's not our pea shell. <laughs> Because our kid got his hand stuck in it. So when we tell this story to the owner, I hope she's not on here, by the way. When we tell this, we're going to say, okay, we've got your piece. It worked great. However. It does still work. <laughs> I checked it after I settled him down hours and hours and hours later. <laughs> I checked it. It's broke. So now but we the have. Top little, the top little. Was riveted. It was. But where you <laughs> send the peas at were the little spinny things are where his hand was there was like a little metal um frame over that so that the peas wouldn't fly everywhere and just it it if it hits it it's it like will shoot them down. Yeah. and that part is ripped off so we'll have to <sighs> i'm gonna try to fix it fix that because they paid two hundred dollars for it and it's used <laughs> Oh, gosh. So that kind of tells you how expensive they are. They pay $200 for it, and it, it's an older one, and it's used. JJ but is okay. He he did he, freak out. I mean, don't you're wrong. He got his fingers pretty good. One good did, thing is. It did not cut them. That's right. It because did not they, cut were, them. they were rubber, and exactly um, right. but they were very tight. And if it goes to show you how tight they were, um. I could not budge them. I wouldn't say that I was very weak. I mean, I can pick up a 50 pound sack of food and kind of roll with it. And I was on a pulley system. So those two pulleys were locked in with rivets. So there's, I mean, they're, they're meant to, you know, to be that, that far apart. Cause the whole purpose is to take a pea or, or, or bean to push it and out. Smush so, it. so there's no way to get it un, un, unless you break it <laughs> like we did, but you know, his, well, I his, couldn't his, budge it. So when I got his hand out, his fingers were flattened. Um, but I have seen them like that before because Harley shut this finger. Like all three of these fingers have been broken. Harley was, they were playing in the room one day. He went out, put his finger in the <laughs> Tough door. To be number five. Tough in to the be number five. in the in the metal part, door hinge, he stuck his finger in there and she shut it on there and it come out flat. <sighs> So it come out and these right here were, were pretty flat and it left an indention in his knuckles where, I mean, it had to only have been just very, very, very few minutes while I was waiting on the men doing everything that I could to get his hand out. Um, it was just very few minutes, but they immediately started swelling and bruising um, but as soon as I got his hand out, I sat down with him, rocked him. I gave him some motion for swelling because um, I knew that they were going to swell. And Colby got me some ice bags and I wrapped, wrapped his whole hand in ice. And I still had finger splints from last time. <laughs> from every other accident we've had at the homestead. So uh, I wrapped him up in ice and I rocked him for probably 45 minutes and he fell asleep. So I sat in the rocking chair with him for probably another two and a half hours mm -hmm. and just rocked him and just let him sleep and just kept the ice on it. And he's and doing good. I mean, he's, he's, he's playing he right now. He did not like when I put, I put the splint yeah, on it like this it. <laughs> and then taped it. Um, and he didn't like that. Um, but he's running around and playing. And he had to learn how to eat a sloppy Joe with the other hand though. That, that blew his mind. <laughs> he couldn't figure that out because he couldn't figure out how to bend these fingers. To yeah. Get that spoon. So, <laughs> It broke my heart and it broke Colby's heart. We were both oh, yeah. really upset um, because it was just like, I should have just, when I heard my phone and I thought, well, I'm going to turn around and check it. I should have picked him up and put him off the table so that he didn't have the opportunity to even mess with it. But he had been sitting there being so good. I mean, he was not bothering anything. It was just in the split second that I turned around to look at my phone. I guess he thought, now I'm, I'm going to touch it. Now I'm going to touch it. She's not looking. And I should have known that. It just. He's probably not going to touch that just, shell anymore, though. It just <laughs> didn't register. Like, I just didn't think about it. I, but that's what I should have done. I should have picked him up and put him down so he would not have had the opportunity. But 
but he is okay. So, but that is our uh, story with the sheller. The sheller will be leaving our home tomorrow, and we won't buy a sheller. <laughs> we're going to be purple hold finger shellers. <laughs> so we're not going to be we're not going to be doing that. Uh, yeah, number five of ten. Wow, Amy. Uh, JJ is thinking he wants to redo his five. He wants to become number six or something. I don't know. He, well, he's, he's he has done. been. Out he's of just all of our prone. kids. He's, he really is. I mean, he just he if is. it's like something's going to happen, it's going to happen. JJ. Well, Harley had a rough few years too. Hey, she, Arkansas woodcutter. Harley busted her lip here and had stitches. She fell into the, a door out of all things, <laughs> and it caught right there on that lip and split it open. She ran and she was running in the kitchen one day and turned the corner. She was right at granite countertop height and she was running wide open and looked back as she was turning and it split her head right here. And then Sayla pushed her out of a wagon one time and she fell on her chin and we have concrete floors. So that's all Harley. But the rest of everybody else have really has really been... JJ's our accident. Jennings. I mean, he has been, he's on like his fourth injury <laughs> since Bert, since he was walking one. He's on his fourth injury. Just in crazy a year. stuff. Yeah. In a year. Well, August will be a year with his from one to two. He's had four like freak What's accidents. amazing. What's amazing is Aiden is so agile. And don't get me wrong, Aiden had, had a soccer accident years ago, but Aiden. I mean, Aiden didn't just fall or hit or hurt. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he and really, really Eliza and, and, and Sayla haven't really either, but Harley was a little yeah. bit more accident prone, but man, JJ, I told Misty, I said, man, JJ's going to hate us, hate everybody in this family. It's like always, I told Colby that it was he's like, always getting hurt. But in that three seconds, hey, I'm Bradford. like, how do you prevent something? I mean, I know how I could have prevented it. Let me go back. But I'm like, the only thing I could do is put him in a bubble because I have to take my eyes off of him from I bought time the bubble to time. Around, by the way, my Amazon. <laughs> I mean, I have to take my eyes off of him from time to time. I just didn't see that happening. I just, I never would have seen that happen. But he is okay. He, he is, is fine. He's he's chilling. He just had to figure out how to eat his sloppy joe with the. Yeah, other I hand. heard him getting upset with Aiden a while ago, which is. He's probably trying to put him to sleep. That's probably why. Yeah, he don't want to go to sleep because <laughs> he slept on me in the rocking chair all afternoon, Not and I true. let him sleep. But it was okay this time. I'm were, that kid grown sure. up, broke my ankle, leg, arm, elbow, wrist. Oh That's pretty See, I I would we say we yeah. are not like that. I mean, we would. I had first time I went in the, two first, times my yeah, life. First time I ever went in the hospital was I had a kidney stone. I was twenty, or no, I wasn't twenty. I was probably eighteen. Yeah, we, we were not married, married yet. yet. Were even? I mean, I knew we were dating. Were we engaged? I think you were eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah, I had my senior shirt on. That's right. So in the hospital, they had to cut it. I'm so mad. That's the only time I ever went in the hospital. Yeah, they do happen quickly. And I heard Grammy Karen say that's why hey, they're Sam, called accidents up? because they do happen quickly. But, you know, it's heartbreaking to us because he's so little. He doesn't understand. I mean, right when he started walking, I had walked away from him to turn the um, water hose on. And when I look back, he just was still going and he got too close to our barbed wire fence. And, you know, as soon as he got there, he would trip. And it cut his arm, sliced his arm right here. And I knew immediately I had to go take him to get stitches. So that was our first accident. And then then the baby, probably, what, a few months after that, in a class that I was in, um, he was running across the turf on the in that gym. And Harley was behind him, and he tripped and fell, and she stepped on his hand and fractured his hand like here so that was our second accident we're going to talk about anymore they don't call and like then, the on us and then then of course he got his finger shut in the door so i mean it was just you know it's stuff it's like do you at what Here's point what do you I'm wrap thinking. them in bubble wrap and let them walk around in bubble next wrap? Next Wednesday. <laughs> next Wednesday, we're going to have a New Year's Eve party. We're going to get rid of 2020. <laughs> we'll start 2021 next Wednesday and Thursday. So, <laughs> everybody, good, bring hey, your I fireworks. Think everybody would be on board for that. I think bring 2020 your fireworks. has been for everybody. Bring your fireworks. And we will have a 2021 celebration. Getting rid of 2020 is where your Happy New Year hats, and we will go from there. 
our middle almost drowned twice, bit by a dog, stitches, but no broken bones. We've only had one broken bone incident, and that was Aiden. He was running in a soccer game and tripped over his own feet and put his <laughs> arm down. And when he straight armed it down, these two bones jammed together and cracked one of the ends. And he was in the cast for four weeks. I don't know. It's been a long time ago. Four, six weeks. Yeah, that's been four or five years ago. I couldn't um, imagine but, seeing y'all the way y'all have your your days and nights showing in Alaska. I, can't, I couldn't imagine that. <laughs> we were at our cabin last week or two weeks ago. And, and it, it was like after nine. It was like nine fifteen and nine twenty. We're not we used to dark. that here. Yeah, the darkest. I mean, you know, eight forty five or eight thirty ish. Really? I was, yeah, I was gonna say it's earlier than that. It's usually eight thirty. It's completely dark here. <laughs> Arkansas Woodcutter said, "No, I'm loving 2020. Best year of my life. Seriously, it's been an amazing year. Our garden has been amazing." Our animals have been amazing. Uh, well, minus the two sheep, but it's everything has done really well. It's not our, ours, yeah, it's not our calf. But everything has done really good. It's been a great year. But uh, poor JJ, he's ready to get out of 2022. <laughs> Anna said, "My youngest daughter was always doing stuff, getting hurt. She still has." post-traumatic stress from that kid <laughs> I look I feel like that's what I'm gonna be with the Jennings like he's gonna cause me to have a heart attack one of these days and it's not his fault I mean he's just very just, active he's, he's it, a very very active he child. is he is like I cannot tell you how many times I have gotten him off of our countertops and y'all he doesn't have easy access to climb on our counters but this is what he does I have I have chairs in my house that have turned upside down because he moves chairs from the living room. We look like a restaurant. We're like turning he stuff pushes, upside down. So. He pushes the chairs to the, he's that strong, pushes the chairs from the living room to the counters just so he can climb on them. He has used chairs that are flipped upside down on the table. He has pushed them off before so he could get them and drive drive them across the floor to the countertop and climb on them. He learned how to open the cabinets and climb up. Like he uses his foot to climb mm. up on the shelf to climb up on the counter. So the one that he was doing it with the most, I finally, um, what are the little pegs called that like go in the wood that holds the shelf up? Man, I don't, well, okay. Well, I had to just take the shelf down. I had to just rip the pegs out and pull the whole shelf down. And I can not even use that cabinet anymore because he climbs on it to get on the counter. It's like, it's really ridiculous. But I, we really want him to grow up to be Spider-Man. <sighs> he is crazy. He just it's, likes to climb. He like, he is just rambunctious. He's just happy. How about we bought an Ergo? You know, the strapping system that goes on now. Misty, she's a little small to carry JJ all like that all the time. But, man, that was the best thing I ever invested in because, man, I can put him on me and we can go with it. So that's actually what we're going to be doing. We're going to probably try to do some work Friday in the garden. And he's going to be in the ergo. So, yep. so you're right. And uh, when you say super smart and never afraid of anything like those two together, just automatically says, Something's not going to be good is he is very smart and he is not afraid. Like my girls were very hesitant about jumping in water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very hesitant, very reserved. When I taught them how to swim, their biggest fear was they didn't want to go underwater. Jennings is fearless. He like. We'll put his little swimsuit of his little um, floaty. floaty on. I mean, he's just summer, like dives. Last, last year he was too little, but this year. He put his floaty on and he just, he, he'll, he will stand at the edge and I have disciplined this action, but he, I have still caught him do it. He will walk to the edge and turn around and just fall backwards. Like that's how crazy he is. <laughs> and y'all, he gives me a run for my money and every night I'm completely exhausted <laughs> from chasing that boy around all day. She's going to miss us tomorrow, though. I am going to miss them. I told Colby, I said, I've never spent the night away from my house or my family or my kid. I mean, Other the kids we I have, the, the kids I have like last night, like unless we were at the hospital or something like that. But like to be gone from everybody is going to be really weird for me. So up, but Chris? I am excited to be able to serve that family during this time in their life. I'm, it's. 
it's going to be more of a blessing to us than than it than it is to them. So, so it's so. just been one of those days. It's been a 2020 day. It's been a 2020 day. Uh, I don't know if y'all have 2020 days, but today yes, was the, one of those. I days. love the ergo, and actually Jennings likes the ergo. It's like when he wants to sleep, I turn him to me, and he does great. When he wants to just hang out, I turn him around. And, you know, he I didn't think he was going to like it, but he really, truly likes it. Every time you put him in, he's never screamed he's to get out or anything like that. He's a skin-to-skin baby, which is yeah. why I'm a little worried about him tomorrow night. Because when he is in the bed with us, because he will not sleep, he's got to be touching. Especially me. Like this morning, I woke up and he was in my back. And so I'm a little worried the nights that I've had to get up because I'm up and down all through the night running into the bathroom. Um, probably a few weeks ago, I don't know. It's been, it's been some time ago. I got up to go to the bathroom and he woke up and I wasn't there and <laughs> Colby you, got him and held him, but he was not having it. So because he, actually, he, wanted to sn he wants my back. That's what yeah, he wants. He, he actually, like during the day and things like, just like when he got hurt, he's a, he's a, he likes hanging out with me, especially if we're outside or mm -hmm. he's a daddy's boy. But when it comes to the nurturing part of like sleep, he'd rather be with Harley, Harley or Misty. And like, he loves Harley, Harley. Like he will lay down by Harley on a couch, on a chair, like last night. Thank you, sweet pea. Um, I mean, like simply last night we tried to rock him. He didn't want to go to sleep. So he just laid down by Harley and went to sleep. He finds comfort. And I don't know if, if he does it with Harley because Harley's dark headed and mm -hmm. reminds him of, of Misty. She's but, just been his other little mama yeah, so forever. It's one of those things where, I mean, he, he, it's weird because he, he loves hanging out with me and me feeding him and playing with me. But when it comes to like sleep, he wants mom. You know, it's just, it's funny. It's correct. Kids are funny. So that daddy will be fine. He, they will be, oh, they yeah, will we, be, but he, he looks for me in the bed at night and, and, and all boils down to because, you know, I, w I nursed him for yeah, nurse 13 baby. months, and when he nursed, he went to sleep, and I nursed him through the night for over a year, so he, that's all he's known, but he'll be fine. I mean, there's, there's no doubt. He'll, he'll be fine. They'll, I mean, we have a rocking chair in there right beside the bed, so if Colby needed to get up and rock him, he would go back to sleep. He just likes to be touched and held. He's a skin to skin baby and he always has been. So mm -hmm. really all our kids really are other than probably uh, Aiden and Eliza. Aiden was until because he used to want to hold yeah. our cold arm. But he doesn't he, he actually is not as much a skin to skin person now as much as like our girls are. Yeah. Yeah, I'll agree with he was until he was probably five or six, and then he all grew yeah. it. Uh, we'll probably have to kick him out, Fancy Farmer. <laughs> <laughs> He'll probably actually go in with Harley. Uh, he could sleep in his crib. We have a crib right by our bed, but sometimes with it's on misty side, and it's hard for her. Well, it's super, super low, and y'all have heard me in some of the other videos talk about my back at times will... And I'm up, I won't say that it'll go out, but it gives me fits. Um, and I'm up all through the night. So I think Missy just says it's just best to put him in the bed. That I mean, way. he's almost two. Yeah. Um, and he's almost as long as I am. But he wakes up every night. So I find it silly. I'm already up and down multiple times, at least three or four times through the night going to the bathroom. So getting up to get him... Is just kind of silly to me, and having him bend down way in that pack and play is not good for my back. So he finds comfort in it. We don't have a problem with it. Um, the new baby will not sleep with me. Um, I have a bassinet that is the same height mm -hmm. as my bed that I've used with all of my kids when they're really, really little. Um, which I'm going to be honest with you. I'm an extremely light sleeper. But still. But still. Um, when they're little like that. We go straight in the basket. Um, they sleep beside me. They don't sleep in the bed. But Jennings, if I laid on him, he would probably See, kick me off the bed. <laughs> the, and the thing now, Chris just said that about just piling them all up. I'm the kind man. 
I, I guess in my life, I can see um, just how important life is with our children and all. So if I get a chance, man, I'm, they could all live with me forever. We could all be, you know, in this home together and they can all pile up in our bed. I love it. It just, it's perfect for me. So that sounds good. We'll have sleepovers every day. I love well, it. how about y'all can have Misty would rather us parties. all slumber in the, in the living room and her slumber in the big bed by herself. I can't sleep. Well, it goes <laughs> back to me being a light sleeper. If they're tossing or turning or if they move, I wake up. It wakes me up. So um, you can sleep with them all over you because you sleep like a freight train. But I do not. I, if any movement is, if any movement, it, it wakes me up, and then I have to try to get back to sleep. So I'm actually not a deep sleeper. I just don't like the kids bothering me. I'm well, on the phone. I, I'm on the phone all night with well, my you work. Were last night, but anyway, you sleep, you sleep through my phone calls. Like, yeah, the phone does not wake me up. It's kid. <sighs> it's the kids. Anything that the kids do wakes me up. Like Harley coming there this morning, and she just, and I was, you know, I was up. And I was in such a deep sleep. I told Chloe, I was like, I don't know why she coming there and woke me up. I was sleeping so hard. But all she had to do was pat me. I mean, just a little pat. And I was immediately up. Um, but still, even going back to the new See you, Chris. thing. Um, no, I, I, my babies are every two hours around the clock um, breastfed. So that's just what I'm used to. All five of mine have done that. So my night routine is um, when I'm ready to go to bed, I'll nurse the baby, put them in the swaddle, swaddle the baby, put them in the bassinet beside me. I leave a lamp on in the room so that I can see. And um, then two hours I'm up again. So okay. It's okay. It's okay. Our We're girls. almost done. My girls spent their uh, day with uh, some of my family. They said they're all in that kind of needing to go sleep. And, well, she needs to clean her face off because they've been playing makeup. They played store today at their nanny's house. And she gave them some paper money to go around to each store that she had set The mercantile up. is what she called it. <laughs> and, they, and she had picked up, like, some little happies from Dirt Cheat and had each one of them in a store. So they had to go from store to store and buy happies and um Ellie Bell decided she wanted bright red lipstick. <laughs> but it's time to go to bed. So you gotta get so all that put off. put spray and hairspray. I don't, I don't have any. And put lipstick on. It's time to go to bed. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, we are going to be shutting it down for the night. As yeah. You see, I think I've yawned. I think every well, five minutes. you've got to go feed the calf. You have I've to go feed the calf. Yeah. And I have to take a bath. And you have to take a bath. You think they do that now? Yeah, yeah, no, no, you better do that. So we're gonna tie up our loose ends for the night. That's still gonna be a few hours worth of work. And um, of course, y'all pray for our friend Stacy and our travels as we go. It only takes you a few minutes to watch news, the news to think, okay, this world's crazy. I just want to stay home and never go anywhere. Amen. Um, but we're going to be on the road and we're going to be a long ways away. So um, just pray for us as we travel. And um, there is a family in our town that's little girl. This what I was telling y'all was upset before the live started. Um, whose little girl just had a massive um, brain hemorrhage. I did not catch her age, but she's got to be in her from her picture, she looks to be in her young teens, um, and they're not sure what kind of extent of brain damage that she has. Um, so if y'all would just remember that family, she's a very young teen and had a massive hemorrhage last night. Mm -hmm. Last night, woke up with an excruciating headache while the mom was up getting medicine she went unconscious. They called 911, ended up taking her to the emergency room. Um, the, she completely lost all consciousness, lost um, incontinent, vomiting. They realized that she had a, a, a bleed. They immediately shipped her to our major hospitals in um, our capital. The bleed was worse than they thought it was. Um, they drilled a hole to relieve pressure, ended up having to remove parts of the skull to remove um, a major clot that had formed. And they're just not sure what kind of brain damage she's going to be. And like I said, we're talking young teen. That's hard for parents. I couldn't imagine what she's going through. Mm -hmm. 
So if y'all were to remember that family too, I know that they will appreciate that. You saw what yeah. you think she's 12. Yeah. I knew she was young from looking at those pictures. I knew she was not much into her teenage years. So 12, that's, that, that's really, really heartbreaking. And I know that's heartbreaking for her family. She's sedated and intubated. And I think she's got to go through several more surgeries before they're going to allow her to try to wake up and see what kind of functions she's going to have. And I couldn't imagine. And that's, that's, that's Aiden's age. That's our son's age. I could not imagine having to be the parents of that. So that's tough stuff, y'all. Just be praying for them. And thank y'all again for watching. I think it helps us always remember how blessed we are and mm -hmm. how thankful we are to shell peas and to have corn, but to really have our family. Yeah. And even though Jennings little fingers got smashed in the, a whole lot better than what we could be dealing with a lot worse stuff. So guys, thank y'all so much for watching tonight and just remember a Misty as they travel. I imagine she'll have some pictures going on Facebook or Instagram of the pretty areas because Mississippi is a little flat and green and country. So hopefully yeah. she'll see a little bit more than that. So thank y'all again for watching. Happy homesteading y'all. Happy homesteading y'all. <laughs>